हरे कृष्णा इफ लॉर्ड चैतन्य महाप्रभु इज द स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर ऑफ तुकार महाराज देन वाई डिड ही नॉट गिव हिम द सेम मंत्र एज द हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र विच इज प्रोक्लेम द इन द उपनिषद्स टू बी द युग धर्मा फॉर दिस एज इफ वी से दैट द सेम वर्ड्स आर देर राम कृष्ण हरि देन समन मे आर गिव दैट दैट इज अ शॉर्टर मंत्र एंड वील चैन दैट मंत्र एंड इट इज ऑल्सो वेरीफाइबल बिकॉज पीपल्स ऑफ तुकार महाराज एक्चुअली गोइंग बैक टू द स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड सो बेटर चैन राम कृष्ण हरि इंस्टेड ऑफ द हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र आंसर नो इन स्पिरिचुअल सर्कल्स वी डोंट हैव टू मोनोपोलाइज स्पिरिचुअलिटी and we don't need to feel insecure if some other people talk about some things which are different from what we are told in our tradition there is a room for transcendental subjectivity in the spiritual realm if we read the brihad bhagavata amrit when the gopa kumar goes to the spiritual world he goes to different places and when he goes to vaikuntha and eventually he goes to even dwarka in the vaikuntha vasis think of vishnu as the ultimate the dwarka vasis think of dwarka krishna to be the ultimate and it is not that sanatan goswami is talking about this conception as wrong you know for them it is true and they completely love vishnu or they completely love dwarka krishna gopakumar however feels dissatisfied and he actually wants to uh, behold krishna as Vraj Kumar as Vrindavan Kishore and then he comes back to the material world does sad from as the sadhana in Vrindavan and then goes back to the spiritual world eventually to its highest abode in Golok Vrindavan so the point is that we will see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also demonstrating this universal spirit so we see that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, he had devotees who were devote intimate devo devotees of he had intimate associates who were devotees of ram okay, murari gupta was there yeah, the, who, who is considered to be an expansion of hanuman and then there was also anupam the brother of anupam and sanatan he was also a devotee of ram and we also see chaitanya mahaprabhu when he went on south india tour there was a devotee who was in great separation from ram and he was absorbed in the past times of lord ram thinking feeling agonized because he was thinking sita has been adopted by ram abducted by ravana and is away from lord ram so lord chaitanya did not try to tell him that oh krishna is supreme he completely appre appreciated and uh, he facilitated the devotee's absorption and he tried to remove the agony of the devotee by bringing the kurma puran section where it talks about maya sita and he reassured him saying that sita was never abducted so we don't have Chait both from the point of view what is there in the spiritual world as explained in the brihad bhagavata amrut and from the point of view of the conduct of sri chaitanya mahaprabhu we don't see this attempt to monopolize spirituality so now how the lord will act in different ways we can't say now, in some cases there's another devote example for devotee where the devotee was chanting constantly the names of her lord ram and when he saw chaitanya mahaprabhu and mm, you so inspired and transformed the shari chanting the names of krishna so chaitanya mahaprabhu appreciated that also so chaitanya mahaprabhu in his past times has demonstrated uh, both you know he has in some cases elevated people who were from who were other, other kinds of vaishnavas to gaudiya vaishnavas now that we understand is dependent on the eternal swarupa of that soul so the lord guides people to become attracted to him according to their swarupa and for some people he encourages them to continue whatever way they were worshiping so when that is demonstrated by the lord itself why do we why should we feel insecure if something else is demonstrated elsewhere so shri chaitanya mahaprabhu is given us the hari krishna mahamantra through the gaudiya tradition through our acharyas and elsewhere he has uh, given a slightly different mantra the rama krishna hari mantra so now what we the rajasik buddhi always tries to see differences and it magnifies its differences because the rajasik buddhi is based on the bodily conception and what i have what others have the sattvic buddhi sees you you, you see the commonality actually yat krishnamade ekasmin bhavam avyamikshate 
so one who sees the ek uh, the away bhav the imperishable spirit in everything that is sattvic intelligence and one who sees the diversity constantly and conflict that is rajasic intelligence so we shouldn't feel insecure uh, because of this because we understand that this transcendental subjectivity in the spiritual world and also whenever there is the, the there is this kind of diversity we understand the lord himself has allowed for this there are different rasas in the spiritual world and different devotees are attracted to different rasas now as far as rama krishna hari mantra being easier you know we shouldn't think that spiritual advancement is a result of uh, doing that which is easy the spiritual advancement comes by krishna's mercy coming through the vaishnavas so when we please the devotees we please the acharyas we will make spiritual advancement it's not that the mantra which is easy will give us spiritual advancement it is the it is the attitude of pleasing krishna and offering our love to him that will may help us to become spiritually advanced so in our sadhana tradition we have been given the hari krishna maha mantra and we will chant that mantra now if somebody feels attracted to the uh alvarakari panth where people chant rama krishna hari the person can go there and chant that also and whether that will lead to spiritual advancement it's not just the utterance of a mantra that leads to spiritual advancement it's a whole transformation of the heart and shri prabhupa through his con is giving us the time honored spirituality pre- presented in a way that is customized for our times and we get we get many like minded people we get systematic philosophical education we get um connection with uh de- connection with a global community of like minded devotees so we get so much in the gaudiya tradition as presented by shri prabhupada through his con which we may not get elsewhere but if somebody is attracted to inspired to go there it's not that that the person is doing wrong and we have to drag that person back or if that person goes there we should feel insecure or maybe i am on the wrong path no there are these different traditions are like different universities and ultimately every all the universities have one common goal that is to help people to graduate so when sri prabhupada gave the example that the different sampradayas are like parties you know the political parties may have different policies but their goal is to promote the national interest so similarly there may be some differences in some different traditions but the essential focus is to help uh, spiritual advancement in its seekers and as far as um, say people observing tukara maharaj going back to the spiritual world yes that is definitely a uh, uh, faith building uh, uh, event that happened over there but there is no way of saying that that is that only one who follows what tukara maharaj did will go back to the spiritual world no and actually the level of devotion that he had the level of self surrender and uh, absorption in god that he had uh, do, can anyone and everyone get that so that is a specific example and if we are going to hang on to that example alone then what will happen is that we have to stick to the literals and can we become devotees of the level of tukaram maharaj and if we can't then will we go back to our spiritual world we can say tukaram maharaj went back to the spiritual world but then we don't see any of his even intimate associates going back to the spiritual world so that was not seen so what does it mean if our if our faith has to be based only on that which has been seen then that would be only one who has the level of devotion to tukaram maharaj went back and others it's all uncertain whether they went back or not so this sort of uh, this sort of hanging on to specifics will create a lot of literal uh, literal issues which will not be resolvable so we see this specific incident as a example of a universal principle and that universal principle is that the lord rod reciprocates with and rewards his exalted devotees and if we look comparatively the kind of exalted devotion that we see in tukaram maharaj we see in many of the exalted saints in the gaudiya tradition also we see it in uh, haridas thakur who is ready to be beaten in the marketplaces we see in the goswami who renounced it everything for the sake of the lord so what we should focus on is the principle of devotion and if we cultivate the principle of devotion in our heart as is told by our acharyas we will go back to the spiritual world so it's not that we have to be insecure you know we see a student who studies and gets the adequate knowledge and graduates from one university 
that doesn't mean that I have to give up my university and go to some other university. No, I can see that people from my university are also graduating. In another question answer I have explained, I said, uh, uh, what is the proof that somebody has actually gone back to the spiritual world? If you want to be skeptical, we can say that, you know, maybe people created a myth that Tukaram Maharaj went, that some Vaikuntha airplane came and Tukaram Maharaj went back to the spiritual world. Who knows what actually happened? So what we can see uh, is not whether somebody went back to the spiritual world or not. And that is uh, always subject to, to a large extent. But what we can see is that there is a transformation that happens in those who follow the process of bhakti. And with all due respects to those who chant the Ramakrishna Hari Mantra, you know, there are many who just chant it as a ritual. And is their life transformed by the chanting of that mantra? Do we see any this worldly transformation, a transformation in this world in terms of them getting, breaking free from bad habits and uh, living very pure lives? Well, there are definitely pure hearted, uh, pure hearted workers who chant the uh, Ramakrishna Hari Mantra, no doubt. But is it, they, they are pure hearted right from the beginning. Is it that the chanting of the Ramakrishna Hari Mantra has led to a dramatic transformation in their lives? There may be some cases, definitely. But the scale at which Srila Prabhupada was able to bring about the transformation in the hearts of people all over the world, that has practically no parallels in world history. The hippies were, you know, were degraded not just from the spiritual perspective of Vedic civilization, but the hippies were degraded even from the material perspective of Western civilization. And Prabhupada took them and elevated them to exalted levels. And he did it not just for one or two people, for thousands of people. So we see the transformational potency of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra right in front of us. We can see it in our own hearts if we practice it. And we can see it in the hearts of others. So that's why we are, remain respectful to other traditions. And we also remain faithful to our own tradition. Thank you. Hare Krishna.